Hey, welcome everyone to another, hold on, I gotta freaking unplug this bullcrap, can't freaking hear anything. I freaking, I made this little sound booth, like, foam thing, but the box is too big, and the foam is too little. And so the video I watched didn't really help, and so I'm hoping this sounds better, but when I put in the headphones, you could still hear that kind of, that fan. So I'm thinking I might get a, a new laptop. Just kidding. I don't have any money. So <clears throat> whatever. If I just keep flapping my gums, you can't hear it. So uh, anyways, welcome everyone. How's it going? Uh, it's been a while. Am I that making a lot of noise? God, I hate this thing. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a week. You know what they say? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Or you forget and don't give a crap. So either one. Either one of those. Today we're going to do the Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks um, travel guide. And I'll help you guys if you ever decide to waste significant amounts of time and money enjoying the great outdoors. I will help you make good decisions and avoid poor decisions in those two places. My first recommendation would be to not go. Especially to Yellowstone, as that place is just overrated to the T, and it's filled with Chinese people, which makes it, you know, unbearable. It makes it uh, almost as bad as the Grand Canyon, but not quite as much. But before I wanted to get into uh, that, let's let's take a quick look and go over the um, the questions I asked you guys, the deal breakers. Now... One of them, I was very disappointed in all of you and all of your horrible, horrible answers. And I can't believe I'm friends with most of you, but let's go ahead and get into it. The first one I asked a couple days ago, but I asked, uh, which is which is worse? Uh, parking outside the lines, inconveniencing everyone else because you're an idiot and don't know how to park, or not putting the grocery carts back in the cart corral just leaving it somewhere in the parking lot. Hold on, I'm going to move the computer. Shut up, Motorola. Uh, when I say computer, my phone goes into OK Google mode, so I'm going to... Not that anyone gets a hold of me, but I'm going to silence this. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. There we go. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, so, or you could choose, uh, yeah, so parking outside the lines, or, it's like my squeaky chair, or not putting the grocery cart back. And the correct answer is the bigger deal breaker, the trait that you do not want out of those two in your spouse or significant other, would be the kind of person who uh, leaves the cart, they, they don't put it back, they just leave it there. And I'll tell you why. Because that is a huge indicator of the kind of personality that they have. Parking outside the lines, it happens to all of us. You, The lines could not be uh, that well marked. They could be that time where they reline the parking lot and then they didn't do it over the same lines. So now you've got these holographic lines and you don't know which one's which. could be dark outside. The other person could have parked over the lines, leaving you no other choice but to park over the lines, okay? But there's no good reason at all why anybody on this God's green earth, why you should ever just leave the cart, just or just leave the cart where you, next to your car in an empty spot. That is, uh, that's, that's as bad as littering. That's as bad as the people who are so... so just the biggest jackasses in the world that they feel it necessary to inconvenience and burden everyone else with their garbage instead of finding a proper place for it. Uh, so 36 of you said that parking outside the lines is the bigger deal breaker. And if you voted for that, you are incorrect. Uh, let's see. 10 of us said that not putting the grocery cart back in the cart corral is the bigger deal breaker, and we are correct. Uh, yeah, that is... Oh, it's so it's so irritating. It's... I mean, there's there's no 
there's no I already said it, there's no good reason for it. So knock it the hell off. If you if you're the kind of person that does this, do us all a favor and go home and put your head in an oven and kill yourself. Because you and second off, do not procreate. I'm looking at and you know what? One, two, at least two of these people that have voted. How many of these people that voted for parking outside the lines have children? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, I don't know, 18, 19, 20. 20 of you, half, over half, have burdened this world with your offspring and you will teach them incorrect things. And I would suggest that you kill your kids while you kill yourself, but I don't think it's fair. We can change those kids. We can, you know, instruct them to please put the shopping cart away when you're done with it. Because you, you, this is this is how a ghetto forms. Okay, this is how a ghetto. This is the first start to a ghetto. Even before projects, even before government subsidized housing, the first step to creating a neighborhood you do not want to live in is by not putting the grocery cart back. That's how you know you live in a good area. By the way, if you if you live in an area where you go to the grocery store and the carts are in the cart corral. You live among good people. That's a that's a litmus test for when you're moving to a new neighborhood and you want to think, do I live amongst the dregs of this world or can I trust these people to not break into my home and rape my wife and kids while I'm away? Go to the grocery store. Go to the closest grocery store and see where the carts are. If the carts are all over the place, GTFO, get out of there. If they're if they're in the they don't even need to be in line in the cart corral. You know, they don't have to be like, you know, up each other's butt. As long as they're there, then you're good to go. But if they're in if they're in the cart corral and they're, you know, all lined up inside each other. Uh, one of my favorite things to say, but uh if they're that, then you need to move there cuz that's that's fine folk. That's that's good people right there. Not only will they not come into your home and rape you while you're sleeping, they will probably bake you cookies and or mow your lawn for you. So, for the love of God, people, put the carts back. And why are you shopping with a cart? Just get a basket. How much stuff do you really need? Fatty? Eat some celery, piece of human trash. All right. Uh, let's, let, let me, let's let some of these... Because some of you had some arguments, and I will... I will directly talk to you right now for those of you that argued opposite of what i'm saying and i am always right uh brandon robison wonderful uh person yeah just kidding he said honestly who cares about shopping carts and then i said figures you'd be the kind of person to say that that's that's if you live next to brandon you need to be careful because there's a good chance he will come into your home and rape you because he is the kind of person that does not care about shopping carts uh that is that is that is actually correlation does cause is causation. That is something that is very much true. Grant Heron said, "Why do you have to make these things so difficult?" And uh, I have to do this because it's what tortures my life every day, and I misery loves company. Uh, Bill Burge, I agree with him. Uh, everyone who's too lazy to put put away a shopping cart should be deported. I agree. Where should we deport him though? That's a good question. I have an idea. Mexico. Why? Why not? Um, Sarah Crompton says the shopping cart thing is so much worse. She is correct. Her husband, Tom, who is a good friend of mine, polar bear, uh, he says Sarah is dead to me. So let's let's read Crompton's uh, argument. As a deal breaker, he says parking is 100%. Think about it. The shopping cart thing you only have to deal with if you go shopping together. Besides, that cart becomes other people's problems, not yours. Okay, so that's a legitimate argument. It's not my problem anymore. Okay, but if your SO is a bad parker, then you have to deal with that on every Taco Bell run for the rest of your life. First off, why is she driving? If I'm in the car with her, 
There's no good reason for her to be driving. I'm the one that's driving. I see this a lot in Provo. I see, I see chicks driving dudes around, and it's really weird. Like, I mean, it's it's good if he told her, "Hey, you're driving," and then he backs each drive drives her all the way. If you know what I'm talking about. But uh, if I'm in a car and there is a female in that car, I better be driving because I want to make sure I get to my destination safely. Uh, women are bad drivers. That's all there is to it. If you're a woman and you're listening to this, I'm sorry. There's really not much you can do besides maybe if you identified as a man, that might cure it. But I think it's just those two X chromosomes, when they get behind a wheel, uh, instead of focusing on driving, they're more worried about listening to crappy music and that dumb bitch that looked at him the wrong way when she was passing him. So... Uh, if you're a woman, I should put a, you know, there are people who listen to this that don't like swearing. So, you know what? I'll have to put a expletive, expletive tag or stop swearing. I'll just put an expletive tag. But, uh, yeah. So first off, number one, women can't drive. Number two, uh, if you're a man in a car and the woman is driving, reevaluate everything you've ever done. Unless this is like a driving Miss Daisy scenario where you have put her beneath you and are saying, servant, you know, go get the car, go cool the car down and get me to my next destination. Um,. But yeah, Crompton, you're wrong. Uh, the shopping cart is a huge indication of who that person is and uh, knock it off. So there's that. Should we save the other one for, yeah, let's save, we'll save the other one. But my goodness, people, parking outside the lines, that's a bigger one than, than being with someone who is so lazy and incompetent that they're incapable of moving a piece of a public, what is essentially public private property to a place where is it de- where it is designated so that other individuals of whom you- we live in a society people okay whether you're one of those crazy libertarians or liberals we live in a society and there's more to a society than consent okay you know i need i need you to realize that we whether you like it or not you were born in this country and as such there are rules about living here that you need to follow Number one, put the cart back where it's from. Okay, just put it back. And not just carts. Put everything back where it belongs. When you're done with, you know, when you have, when you take too much ketchup and you have packets left over, don't throw it away. Put it back in the little pack, in the packet place so other people may enjoy ketchup. You know, don't be lazy and just throw it away. Put it back. Uh, This includes like children. Like if you find a kid walking down the street that's not yours, don't take it home and throw it in a well. Just leave it. Put it back to where you found it after you're done using it. Uh, can you just please? Okay, it's not hard. It's not hard to be part of society. Most of it is just not doing stuff. It's not even doing stuff. It's the not doing stuff. The things I'm asking you to do are the the, the doing stuff parts. But just don't kill people. Don't hurt. Don't, like just leave everyone else alone. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Trump 2016 and the Hillary for prison. There. Um, let's see. What else? But yeah. Can you imagine? Like, if you're married to one of these people, this is the kind of person that's going to leave the milk out. It's going to go bad. You're going to be buying milk every other day. These are the kinds of people who don't empty the dishwasher or do not load it. You know? They just... It's a constant recycle of dishes in and out of the dishwasher, and you don't know when it's clean or dirty. These are the kinds of people who stack the trash on top of the garbage can, and then they never take it out. So you're the one that's always... You are the part of society. And this is... These are Bernie supporters. These are commies. And they have to be dealt with, with force. They have to be have their flayed, their feet flayed, put into the salt mines, then to the gulag, and then shot into outer space, and their entire 
uh, relatives should be removed from off the face of the planet. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, they are awful people that do not deserve to live. That being said, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, come on, guys. Just get it together. We'll talk about the next one. Uh, hopefully this Cambodian agency will get my uh, pumpkin over here soon, but with all these questions I'm having to answer, it's ridiculous. All right. Um... Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Yellowstone and uh, Grand Teton. Okay, so check it out, guys. Let's talk a little bit about uh, national parks. So for work, I'm a tour guide. Probably know. Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Anyways, I know my way around. And for whatever reason nowadays, it's become very popular to go to national parks. And there's even people, usually hot couples, or hot couples with kids that people think are cute, even though I bet you they're little buttholes. That uh, they sell everything or they, they quit their job for two years and then they travel. And then they go on social media and they document it. And then everyone falls in love with them. And these are the kinds of people you do not want to associate with. I mean, listen, think about that. They quit their jobs for two years so that they can go and travel with kids. And I'm supposed to think that that's great? You're, you, why? Why? Why do you hate your kids? This isn't good for kids. There's no structure. They don't know where they're staying next. They're not going to make any friends. They're going to be friends with their with their awful siblings. Nobody likes their siblings until they're like 25. You know, nobody, nobody's friends with their siblings up until they're all adults and live away from each other and can afford their own food. Okay? So now, now you're going to force these kids to be friends with each other. And they're going to be traveling all over the world. Where's they don't? Ha- where's their doctor? Where's their he- their health insurance? What if something happens? You don't care about your family if you do that. You're a stupid prick. Also, traveling sucks. So let's say you want to. Uh, you know, we'll cover Yellowstone, then we'll go to Grand Teton because Yellowstone sucks. Grand Teton is cool. So let's talk about Yellowstone. So Yellowstone is going to be open from mm, mid to late May, all the way to mid to late October. And when I mean open, what I mean is open to cars. It's open year round unless the government shuts down, but from May to October it's open to cars, which means that you can drive your car in, okay? In case you Cretan simpleton dum dums didn't get that. So man, I wonder if I wonder if you can hear me. I have I I'm trying to figure out how to get my uh ah it's fine, whatever. I can't get the freaking lag to stop when I have my headphones in to monitor this, but I bet it's fine. And if you can't, nobody listens to this, so who gives a crap? But anyways, then the case then there's five entrances to Yellowstone. You've got the north entrance, north entrance. I also speak too fast, so I'm gonna try and slow down. We've got the north entrance, northeast entrance, east, south, and west entrance. The north and the northeast entrances are in Montana. Well, actually, the, the west entrance is in Montana too. South entrance is right above Grand Teton National Park. It's in Wyoming. East entrance is also in Wyoming. The closest town from the east entrance, the closest big town is Cody. The closest big town from the south entrance is Jackson, Wyoming. The closest town from the west entrance is West Yellowstone. The closest town from the north entrance is um, Gardner. And the closest town to the northeast entrance is Cook. Cook City, I believe it's called. So if you're going to be coming from, let's say, Oregon, Washington, you're going to want to come in through the west entrance, and that's going to take you up through, or from Utah. If you, okay, if you're going to be coming from the, okay, well, this is pretty up. If you're coming in from the west, going through the west entrance, uh, they're all the same. But, I mean, if you're coming up through Canada or something, take the north or northeast. Just get into the park because you'll just be disappointed for everything else that happens after that. So that's how you get there. From any, from Salt Lake, it's five hours. It's a five-hour drive to the west entrance. Um, if you want to enter through the south and see Grand Teton National Park before you go see Yellowstone, that's probably going to be uh, it's a six-hour drive just, just to drive through. To go from Salt Lake... <clears throat> 
up through Jackson, and then once you enter Jackson to the entrance to Yellowstone, it's probably going to be an hour, maybe an hour and a bit, so six hours. Anyways, let me tell you what, let me, first off, let me tell you what not to do in the park, since that will be the brunt of this. Once you get into Yellowstone National Park, this is what you do not want to do. Do not stay inside the park. Do not stay at a hotel inside the park. Do not camp inside the park. Why? Because they suck. That's why. The beds suck. The food sucks. There's no AC. The water pressure sucks. The placement of the shower heads suck. The, uh, there's no TV. There's no AC. There's no free Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi you have to pay for sucks. And it's expensive. Uh, what else sucks? Did I mention the beds? Did I mention the beds suck? That they're hard and that they suck? The rooms are small, they're overpriced, they're expensive, and they suck. It sucks. For the love of God, do not stay inside the park. If you can avoid it at all costs, do not stay inside the park. If you're going to go to Yellowstone, the best place to stay is going to be West Yellowstone, Montana. It's a little town. It's called West Yellowstone. It's in Montana. Um, and when you stay there, do everything you can to stay in one of the chains. There's a Holiday Inn Express there. There's a Best Western. Do everything you can to stay there because those are nice. You can trust them. Uh, another one I'd recommend is the Kelly Inn. Or... Oh, I'm not sure what that one is. I'll have to look it up on this map real quick. Uh, places to avoid is the Geyser Inn because it's filled with Chinese people. Uh, so do not stay there. Um... Okay, here we go. It's right across. No, I want to in the map. Uh, okay, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Here we go. So, but the Holiday Inn Express is great. The um, Holiday Inn, the Best Western, the Kelly Inn is really nice. Here we go. That's what I want. Earth. That's what I want. Um. The Crosswinds Inn is another really good place. That's just right down the street from the Arby's, which is really the only good place to eat. Uh, let's see, what else is there? There's the Days Inn. It's pretty nice. The Stagecoach Inn is also really, really good. Avoid the Brandon Iron Inn and avoid the uh, Geyser Inn. Those are both awful places. But there's a couple Best Westerns. You know, uh, there's some camping sites and whatnot. There's a glamping place just down the road. Glamping is stupid, but there's a good chance that because if you want to go to Yellowstone, you might be kind of stupid. But who am I to tell you what to do? I'm just here giving advice. <clears throat> so check out those places. The Best Western Desert Inn, the Best Western Weston Inn, the... Uh, Stagecoach Inn, the Days Inn, the Holiday Inn Express, the Crosswinds Inn, and the Kelly Inn. If you're going to go there, stay there. Why? Number one, you're not inside the park, so it doesn't automatically suck. Number two, you're in a town. Uh, that means when you're done for the day, there's stuff to do. You can walk around, take a look. There's an IMAX theater you can watch a movie at. They've got like a bear and wolf place where you can go look at, look at bears and wolves. They've got a museum. Tons, I mean, the whole freaking place is dedicated to travel. So there's tons of souvenir stores. There's a lot of different restaurants and they're not that bad and they're not that overpriced. Um, yeah. So also the hotels you're going to stay at, number one, they won't suck. I've already told you that. They have good beds. They have good water pressure. They have good placement of shower heads. They have TVs. They have free, good internet. Uh, they're not too terribly overpriced. Um, no, Yellowstone's in demand, so if, if that's too much, you could probably stay in, like, Island Park. Uh, the closest big town or decent-sized town is going to be to Yellowstone 
It's going to be Idaho Falls, Jackson, Cody, or Bozeman, Montana. But those are still an hour drive. After you've seen the park, you don't want to drive an hour and a half to your hotel, you know. West Yellowstone is literally 30 seconds from the west entrance. So that's where you want to stay, okay? Also, it's going to be inevitable that you're going to eat inside the park, at least for lunch. Uh, All the restaurants are kind of the same, but do avoid these places for lunch. Geyser Grill at Old Faithful. That place sucks. I mean... They screw up a hamburger. Do you know how hard it is to screw up a hamburger? It's not that hard, and they're, they're capable of doing it because they're incompetent. Uh, that's about it. Everywhere else is fine, but it's overpriced, guys. That's, that's what it is. It's run by the government, so it's like a monopoly. But anyways, um, lodging, blah, blah, blah. what does my script say? Because uh, I wrote this down a couple weeks ago. Ba 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 ba. Um, okay, so let's say you need to stay inside the park. Everything else is taken out. The only lodging available is inside the park. I haven't stayed at all the hotels, but I've stayed in several. And if you have to stay inside the park, Snow Lodge at Old Faithful is a, isn't a bad place. The rooms are a lot bigger than most places inside the park. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do around Snow Lodge at the end of the day. You're just like a five-minute walk from Old Faithful Geyser. And around Old Faithful, there's a bunch of hot springs and geysers that you can look at. There's a huge visitor center. There's like three souvenir shops. There's like four four or five restaurants. Uh, That's not a bad place. If you can avoid avoid everywhere else, that's fine. Don't stay at like Mammoth Lodge because you have to share bathrooms like you're living in the third world or something. Uh, Maybe it's so you can quote unquote get closer to nature, but F nature. So... Okay, so there you go. Stay outside the park. Eat outside the park. Just don't spend as little time inside the park as you can. But that's why you're there. Am I right, ladies? Am I right? So you so you travel all this way to come to Yellowstone, and now you're pissed off because there's a thousand Chinese in your pictures, and the Indians next to you smell like curry, and now you smell like curry all day, and now you want curry, but there's no curry to be had, and now you're pissed off because it's hot, and there's mosquitoes, and the people around you won't shut up about how beautiful the place is. But now you're just filled with disappointment because it's been built up so much. And you get here and you realize the place isn't that good. So, what should you do once you get to Yellowstone? Well, that is a great question, my friends. That truly is a good question. So let's talk about that. Well, you're going to want to focus your time on the lower loop. Okay? Let me tell you why. Because the upper loop sucks. That's why. The upper loop has Tower Roosevelt, Tower Falls, it has Mammoth Hot Springs, Norris Geyser Basin, Gibbon Falls, Barrel Spring, Roaring Mountain, Artist Paint Pots, Uh, and all of those really aren't that interesting. Um, It has Dunraven Pass and Chittenden Road to Mount Washburn, which I've never been up, but it seems kind of cool. It's like a road that goes up to this mountain, so you don't have to hike it. And hike, since hiking is stupid, that's pretty sweet. But really, the lower loop is going to have all the have all the stuff that you're there for. The lower loop has Old Faithful, Grand Prismatic Spring. It's got Lake Yellowstone. It's got the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Um, it's going to be easier to fill your day up with activities there. Instead of driving the whole thing. Most of the tours I do, we do the whole park in one day. Um, Or just about the whole park. We get there, we do like a quarter of it, and then the next day we do the remaining three quarters. But um, Advice on seeing what to see, what to see. Uh, Let's see. When you go to the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone... Don't go to the brink of the Upper Falls because it's just a trail that leads you down to where, well, to the brink of the falls. And so you're just sitting there watching water fall over a cliff. Uh, It's not interesting and it's a huge waste of time. So when you go to see the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, first hit up South Room Drive and just go to Artist Point. If you want to 
there's a trail called Uncle Tom's Trail that you can take, which will, it's not the Uncle Tom you're thinking about, but it's just another guy named Uncle Tom. But you can take this trail and it's just, it's just a staircase that takes you down to the bottom of the waterfall. Uh, so for those of you that for some, half, for some reason feel the need to exercise or prove that you can do hard things for whatever reason, you might enjoy that. But it, the best place for pictures of the lower falls is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. So you go down to Artist Point. You could probably spend, I don't know, 15 minutes there taking pictures. Those are really good. Um, then you could take, then you could leave and take the North Rim Drive, stop at a couple places, and get a good look at the falls from there too. Once you exit the North Rim Drive, it'll put you into Canyon Village, where they have a lamb burger for lunch. That's pretty good. I know a lot of you guys don't like lamb, but I'm a lamb man myself. Uh, there, there's a, there's, 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 so if you're going to do that for lunch at Canyon Village or for dinner, okay, well, the restaurants at Canyon Village are the dining room, which has a souvenir shop attached to it and a bar. Across the way is a deli and a cafeteria. Avoid the deli and cafeteria because that food sucks. But if you're just looking to chill, shoot the breeze and drink some soda pop, then go to the cafeteria because it's free refills, baby, and uh, wide open seating. Then across the way from that is the general store, the grocery store, a grill that has crappy burgers and food that's overpriced, so don't eat there, and then a souvenir store and pretty decent bathrooms. Then across the way from that, is an ice cream place, a place to buy like hiking clothes and gear, and then the visitor center. So there's a lot to do there. But uh, if you're, when you go see the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, that's what I suggest you do. Uh, for pictures, you want aperture at uh, 0 0.80. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. I just use my cell phone. Next. Okay. So Lake Yellowstone. So Lake Yellowstone's. it's okay. But... Uh, you know, if I were you, if, if you're going to go see Lake Yellowstone, you know, guys, it's vacation. Enjoy it. Spend a little money. I mean, for crying out loud, you flew or drove to this awful place, and uh, you know, and now you're disappointed. You might as well try and make it fun. So if you're going to see Lake Yellowstone, go take a tour. Get, get, get one of the uh, boat tours and actually see the lake. Don't just drive alongside it because it's not that great. Um... Lake Yellowstone Lodge isn't that impressive, and their food sucks. Uh, they do not have Wi-Fi at that hotel, though. So if you have to stay there, they'll give you a. You can go to their business center, which has know, four or five computers in there. Uh, the cabins aren't bad, though. Um, but Lake Yellowstone Lodge really isn't that impressive. Uh, but Lake Yellowstone is cool. I mean, if you want to go fishing, I guess. But uh, uh, if I were you, I would take a, a boat tour of Lake Yellowstone. Uh, next, Old Faithful. Old Faithful is that stupid geyser that no one cares about. It goes off every 90 minutes. There's a phone number you can call that I should know, but I never call it. I just show up and find out what time it is and then go from there. But it goes off every 90 minutes, so if you're there for at least two hours, you'll be able to see it. It's not really as great as you think it is, but little kids love it. If you're an adult, then, you know, come out probably make a few jokes about, uh, you know, things erupting, so forth and such and such. But um, around Old Faithful, there's a bunch of cool stuff. There's Morning Glory uh, Hot Spring, which is a very, which is a somewhat small, but very brilliantly colored hot spring that looks like a Morning Glory, which is a flower. Uh, it's a pretty far walk, though. From Old Faithful, it's about a mile there and then a mile back. So two miles for a hot spring. I mean, I guess if you have nothing else to do, like, why not? And it's a paved flat road, so, you know, no worries there. And there's, like, geysers and other crap along the side. But those are those ones are more difficult to say when they're going to go off. You can find that information inside the hotels and visitor center, though, what time the other geysers are going to go off besides Old Faithful. Um, 
the Old Faithful area has pretty decent food. But again, avoid it if you can. You know, if you can, you know, just pack snacks or whatever. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Apparently, there's a ghost in the Old Faithful Lodge. This woman got her head cut off because her husband was a butthole. And then apparently at midnight, she will descend from the crow's nest carrying her head. Which is weird. Because if I was a ghost and I got my head cut off, I'd probably just put it back on my on my head, on my neck. I mean, I wouldn't want to carry that. Plus, your, your sense of vision is all screwed up. Because now your head's a lot, your eyes are a lot lower than what they were and you'd have to get used to that you know maybe you you'd probably feel like you shrunk but you didn't you're just carrying your head a lot lower but uh you know if you're not tired and you're staying in old faithful you're around there around midnight go in and see if you see ghosts and then tell me um let's see and then grand prismatic spring is also really cool especially if you can go on a hot day or a warmer day because that's when the steam will be at a low point and you can actually get good pictures. The The trail that would take you to a, a nearby hill where you could go to the top of it and take a picture and get a picture of what it looks like from above has been closed, Fairy Falls Trail, because uh, everyone there was not a real trail to get up to the hill to take a picture up, up from up top because, you know, nature is precious and humans are evil. But so now the National Park Service has decided, hey, since everyone went there anyways, why don't we just effing do what people want and make a trail out of it? So that's what they're doing. So if you if you really want that picture of Grand Prismatic Spring, that big hot spring that's blue and red and yellow and or, uh, orange and green, wait a couple years, go back in 2018, I'd say, because they said it was going to take till 2017. But just check the website because, you know, it's the government and they're incompetent. By the way, you do need to understand one thing. Once you enter Yellowstone National Park, your life is not as valuable. Uh, you are a human. You are the cause of the destruction of this whole planet Earth. Yada, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. I got to take my ankle thing off. Oh, that is sweet, sweet, beautiful. Um, so just be aware. Oh, and be bear aware. Because there are bears. Uh, if I were you, I would take a gun. If, if you're going to go hiking off trail, or you're going to go hiking in the backcountry, and there's a possibility of you meeting a bear, don't take bear spray. Take a gun. It's something that's at least 357 Magnum. 44 Magnum, 500 Smith and Wesson Magnum, even better. Because bear spray is just going to piss off the bear. Uh... And then kill the bear and do the world a favor. Less bears. You know, bears aren't that great, you guys. I don't get. I don't understand what the... I'm going to look up if they're endangered, by the way. What's going on? How come I don't have internet? Let's check it out. Are bears endangered? What kind of bears? Let's check it out. Black bears. That is so weird. Uh, okay. All right, so according to Wikipedia, black bears are of least concern. That means there's a ton of them. Let's check out brown bears. Brown bear. There we are. Oh, that's not what I want. You guys like that silence guy? I hate the fan on this computer so much. What's going on? Okay, brown bears are also least concerned. There's a ton of them. Yeah, apparently, but apparently... Uh, it has basically... There's like 200,000 of them, which is more than enough. Now let's check out the grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. No, son of a gun. Grizz. There we are. Am I autistic? Okay, and there's like a ton of those too. Can I get some numbers? They're least concerned too. Range and population. There we go. Hmm. There's like 25,000 of them occupying British Columbia, Alberta, 
and the tundra areas of the Ngava Peninsula. Uh, there's like 30,000 in Alaska. God, that's a lot of layers. But apparently it says in the continental United States, there's only 1,500. And apparently 800 of those are in Montana. And 600 live in Wyoming. And then 70 to 100 live in northern and eastern Idaho. Uh, why don't they just... Alright, so there's tons of them elsewhere. Who cares? Anyways, uh, that's something you know about bears. Bear spray is not going to protect you. It's just going to piss the bear off. Oh, God, what else? Don't go to Mammoth Hot Springs, guys. Really don't. That upper loop, only go if you have, like, time. If you've got, like, a day where you're, like... We just want to drive around and listen to music and chill. Then sure, do the upper loop. Take a break at Tower Falls. Take the road. Take the Chittenden Road to Mount Washburn. Uh, you know there may be something cool at uh, Tower Roosevelt. I've never stopped because it's never in the itinerary, and we're busy enough as it is. Uh, the drive from Tower Roosevelt to the northeast entrance is a pretty sweet drive. You might be able to see wolves out there too. Uh, because they're a majestic creature, apparently. And then, um, but Mammoth Hot Springs is a huge disappointment. Unless you're into history, and then there's some history up there. But yeah, it, na nature-wise, it is a, it is a disappointment. Just like you are to your mother and father. But, uh, yeah. That's Yellowstone. God, 41 minutes? Oh, what the F? This podcast sucks. All right, let's talk about Grand Teton. Grand Teton's way cooler. So Grand Teton National Park is just south of Yellowstone. Uh, it is way more awesome. There's not as many people there. It's not as freaking huge, so it doesn't take an hour and a half to get everywhere. Uh, there's not really that many Chinese. Jackson is just a hop, a skip, and a way where there's good food and hotels and a sea and things to do. Uh, the scenery in the Tetons is a lot be better. Grand Teton means great nipple. That's pretty cool. A teat. The Teton. Um, when you go to Grand Teton National Park, uh, places for pi I, I I don't know too much, but you uh, places for pictures, you're going to want to stop at Jackson Lake Lodge, Oxbow Bend, Fairview Point, uh, Snake River Overlook, Jenny Lake, and The Dam. Those are some places we're going to get some really good pictures. Uh, if you're going to see the sunrise at the Tetons, do not look at the sun. That is stupid. Uh, if you're going to see sunrise at the Tetons, what you need to do is drive out to like Mormon Row, um, and then... When the sun comes up, look at the Tetons. That's that's the good picture right there. But I don't know why, for the love of God, I don't know why I have to wake up at 4 a.m. so we can go watch the sunrise. I don't get it, but uh, what do I know, apparently? Apparently, well, I know everything. I know that, but... I mean, if you have to choose, I would really say go to the Grand Teton National Park. It's a lot more of a vacation feeling. It's not crowded. So you're going to be able to find a place to park. Uh, there's not a ton of people, so you're not going to be, you know, surrounded by by idiots. It's going to be more of a vacation feel. Um, the Visitor Center has a really good movie where you can learn about the history of the park. There's animals all over the friggin' place. There's lakes and rivers that are easily accessible. Uh, there's some good human elements of, of nature. The pictures are a lot better. They're a lot easier to take. Um, yeah, Grand Teton National Park is way cooler. I mean, the mountains come out of nowhere. There's no foothills. If you want to go hiking, there's tons of hikes. If you want to go rock climbing, you can climb up all the way to the top of Mount of the Grand Teton. Uh, if you just want to chill, there's tons of places to just chill. If you've got little kids, it's really easy too because there's no boardwalks. 
so you don't have to worry about them like falling into a hot spring. Like a month, a month and a half ago, some dude fell in a hot spring. Like he tried. He got away from the boardwalk like 200 yards and fell in. But if you've got little kids, you're walking right next to these hot springs. you got to be careful because if they fall in, you know, you're at your SOL and their SOL. If you've got little kids or, you know, you just want to see something cool, I highly recommend Grand Teton National Park. Uh, like I said, too, Jackson is, is pretty close by. There's this place called the Bar T5, and they do a chuck wagon cookout. The food's not super great, but the entertainment's really good. It's pretty funny. I mean, maybe I've just been around really bad senses of humor and bus drivers for too long. But I had a good time. Uh, there's a, You can go rafting on the Snake River. Um, you know, when you go into Yellowstone, they make you feel guilty for producing ATP. They make you feel guilty for being a human because this is all your fault. Even though humans are the ones that made the national park. Bears didn't do it. I didn't see a bunch of passenger pigeons signing into legislation that they're not going to crap all over this place. So humans did that. Thank you very much. But uh, Grand Teton National Park is where it's at. Uh, I would recommend going there. You could do a day there. You could do a couple days. Uh, There's a lot of cool stuff to see. Uh, There's cool stuff around there, too. You don't have to just spend it inside the park. You can go out to, uh, uh, what's it called, Freedom, Wyoming. You can go hit up Freedom Arms, and you can buy a single-action revolver and 500 line bar, which is pretty sweet. You can go out to Thane, go out to Star Valley Ranch. I got a buddy out there. You can play golf. You can put on some fun, funny looking pants and chase a ball around a yard because, uh, I don't know, you feel like that's a, an interesting thing to do. But if you're going to visit the Grand Teton Yellowstone area, I highly suggest you go, you skip Yellowstone and you check out Grand Teton National Park. It is so much better. So much. I, I've been there a lot and i hate almost just about everywhere i go but i can go to grand teton you know twice a week god i'm sorry for these noises but and i never get sick of it it's always it's always it's always awesome and like i said there's never chinese people there which is a big deal you guys gotta understand like they are really rude and loud and they smell bad i'm sorry it's just how it is i'm sure there's a lot of them that don't but I don't know if it's mainland China or the north or the south. I don't know how it works, okay? China's a big place. I've only seen Mulan a couple times, okay? And maybe that's where it all started, me and my this weird, you know, Asian thing. But look, Mulan was great. She was Chinese, right? She wasn't Hun. Hun is, what's the bad guy's name? Khan? Oh, Fu, Fu Wong? Who cares? But anyways... Uh, Grand Teton, baby. That's where it's at. Check out those mountainous nips, and uh, yeah, you'll love it. So, okay. Um, yeah, and th- I mean, seriously, guys, there's a ton. There's Jackson's not a bad place. There's some good food there. There's activities. How many times have I mentioned that? God, is that pretty really repetitive? Uh, the Lex, if you want to stay in Jackson, I've only seen it a couple times, but the Buffalo Inn isn't too bad. Uh, the Sorry, Painted Buffalo Inn isn't that bad. Uh, the Lexington is really, really nice. Uh, there's a place called, there called the Amangani, which is like 1300 a night, and that place is really, really, holy crap, it's way nice, but you probably can't afford that. And even if you could, why would you spend 1300 bucks to to sleep? I mean, come on, it's retarded. There's a lot of good places. There's Bubba's Barbecue isn't bad. There's like three or four good Thai places. There's like cafes and all that organic stupid bull crap. They have Huckleberry ice cream. That stuff is straight up chutch. And uh, they got some good prime rib there too. So if you're going out there, tell Yellow, give Yellowstone the bird, tell it to pound sand, and just head over to Grand Teton National Park. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. Or not, I can't tell, nor do I care. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It is uh, almost 50 minutes of your life is gone after listening to this. So I hope you enjoyed it. But if you didn't, well then, tough shit. Alright, love ya.